Loops are another powerful construct in any language for that matter, including Java. I can safely say that it's very difficult to write a meaningful standalone Java program without some kind of loop. There are three types of loops, the for loop, the while loop, and the do while loop. You have come this far in the program means to say that you are awesome. And let's make the computer tell you that. So what you see here is a block of code in which there is a statement with the required tier. But I want the computer to tell you three times so that it really sinks into you. One way of doing that is to write the statement three times. But this is a dumb way of doing. One rule of thumb in programming is don't repeat yourself as there are always better constructs that you can use to avoid them. So you want to have only one statement, but you want the computer to execute that three times. So the question that comes up is how to execute this block n number of times and how to stop after n number of times, where n is three in this example. If you guess that the answer to the first question is some kind of decision control, then you're right. And you need some kind of counter for the second answer. So one of the three constructs for the loop is added to the code block to get the result. A for construct consists of three code segments. The first one is the initialization block where you declare a variable and initialize an initial value to begin our count. In this example, i is that variable and it is initialized to zero. The second segment consists of any expression which should evaluate to true or false. Notice that the first two segments should be separated by a semicolon. The last one is the update statement where the variable that was used in the initialization is updated. The initialization statement is executed only once, only in the beginning. The Boolean expression is evaluated before entering the block every single time. The update statement is executed every time after completing the block. See this example running. I have declared a loop example class and I have put that in a loop example.java file and I've also got a public static void main method. And now I'm gonna put my loop, which will print out your awesome three times. So how do I do that? For int i equal to zero, i less than three, less than three, i plus plus. Then open the block of code inside which I'll put the println statement, you are awesome. So I'm gonna compile this now, and run it. There you go. You have the three times printed out, you are awesome. So once again, to recap, what is it we have? This part is the initialization block where you can initialize any variable. We have used i as the variable, but you can definitely change it to n or whatever else you want. Typically, you use a single character variable for these kind of loops. This is the only part when you're allowed to use single character. I mean, when I say allowed to, it's not that computer cares about it. It's only for others to understand. So you're allowed to use single character variable names here when you're inside a loop and this is the conditional boolean expression which evaluates to true if it evaluates to true only then it enters this block of code for execution and after executing a block of code it jumps to this statement which does an update n plus plus is nothing but incrementing n by one so very first time this is executed then Immediately, this is executed. If this turns out to be true, it enters the block. And after it finishes all the statements in the block, 
it jumps to this last statement which is the incrementer where it increments the value of n and then it keeps looping loopy loop this for loop till the time this turns out to be false so this will become false after three times first time it is zero second time it it is incremented to one third time it's incremented to two and the fourth time it's incremented to three at which time it stops in a while construct two of the statements that are used in the for loop are moved elsewhere in the program typically the initialization statement is moved to some line before the block the while construct only needs the conditional statement which is executed every time before entering the while block if you want the while loop to stop after a certain number of executions then typically you have to have the update statement which is inside the block now let's get rid of this for loop and get the same functionality using a while loop how do we do that so get rid of this for loop now we need the initialization statement so int n equal to 0 and then we have the conditional n less than 3 and then we're going to put our statement here and then you have to have the update statement inside the block so it's going to be n plus plus and that's it so now let's save this and then compile this and then run it there you go so you have the same three statements coming using the while loop now what happens if you don't have this update statement let's say that you forgot to put this update statement then what's going to happen well what's going to happen is n is initialized to zero and then since n is less than three n is zero so zero is less than three so this turns out to be true it enters the while loop it finishes this block once then goes back again here checks to see this conditional and it is still true because n is stuck at zero it's still true again it comes back here finishes this block and again jumps back here and it keeps doing this forever till you terminate the program using control c because automatically this program will not terminate by itself because it keeps running forever let's see how that looks so uh, now that I removed this, let me go ahead and save it and then compile this and then run this. There you go. You see this, your awesome statement being printed out forever and forever. So to get out of this, you have to use control C. You might have to wait for a little bit because the loop is really looping and looping and looping and it takes a while for it to even listen to you even if you uh, click control c last construct which does exactly the same kind of a loop is a do while loop do while loop is similar to the while loop except the conditional goes after the block so let's change this while loop to a do while loop so for that what we need to do is remove this and put a do there it's do and then the block and then you have the conditional here with the while so the while moves all the way in the bottom after the block is finished and now you have n is less than three and then you have to end this with a semicolon this is it so how does the functionality change with the do while loop let's find out so let's compile this and then run this now what do you see it's the same exact result there is no change however let's now make n as 3 if n is equal to 3 now what do you see you actually see this printed out once and the reason for that is since it tests the conditional only after the 
block the program finishes executing this whole block and then tests the conditional and that is why you still see this you are awesome printed out even though n is equal to 3.